Okay, so good morning everyone. Today we will continue with our uh, book club on the fundamentals of diagnostic radiology with the chapter on the pediatric radiology, uh, part one. We will, will be presented by Dr. Atara. Uh, Dr. Atara. May she start. Today our uh, subject is about pediatric radiology, uh, pediatric uh, chest. Uh, we discuss uh, abnormal lung opacity, abnormal lung volume, pulmonary cavities, and lung disease in neonate. First, uh, abnormal lung opacity. Pulmonary opacities in children classified as alveolar or interstitial, focal or diffuse, unilateral or bilateral, central or peri uh, perihilar distribution, peripheral or basal in location, and mixed pattern also occur. We have alveolar patterns, which include alveolar consolidation, atelectasis, and multiple patchy lung opacities. Alveolar consolidation occurs when the alveolar airspace is replaced by a substance, usually fluid. Focal consolidation must often represent exudates associated with the bacterial pneumonia, like streptococcus pneumonia, mycobacterium, staphylococcus, or hemophilus influenza. The most common cause in the pediatric age is streptococcus pneumonia, while hemophilus influenza is dramatically reduced due to the use of the vaccine. Other causes are fungal infection, pulmonary infection, lung contusion Large. and focal infarction, sorry, lung contusion and focal pulmonary hemorrhage. Feature of bacterial consolidation are oval, round, ill-defined or fluffy area of solid opacification, often more peripheral than central in location, may progress to involve an entire lobe, but involvement of entire lung is uncommon. Little or no volume will be lost in the affected lung during the acute stage of infection. After regression, maybe some little decrease in the volume. This is the chest radiograph, PA view and lateral view, showing the uh, opacification of the right upper zone. The fissures are not displaced, so there is no volume loss and due to the bacterial infection. Consolidations with the viral infection are not particularly common, but can occur with a more serious viral infection, such as adenovirus, influenza, parainfluenza, and respiratory syncytial virus. Most likely, they represent intense interstitial disease compressing the alveoli. A similar process may occur with the mycoplasma infections. Pneumonia caused by the gram-negative bacilli in uncommon, is uncommon in children. It occurs primarily in infantes and immunocompromised children. Primary tuberculosis should be considered when the infiltrate is accompanied by hilar lymphadenopathy. Like in this case, there is opacification in the right middle zone with a prominent right hilum. After treatment, the consolidation is resolved, but the enlarged Hyalur lymph node remain it. Another alveolar pattern is atelectasis. It's a common occurrence in children, especially those with the bronchial disease, such as acute viral respiratory tract infection, reactive airway disease, and asthma. Atelectasis can sometimes resemble a bacterial consolidation. We can differentiate atelectasis from bacterial consolidation by volume loss, a flattened or linear shape in the pulmonary opacity and by the clinical feature. We, if there is volume loss and flattened or linear shape in the pulmon pulmonary opacity indicating that there is atelectasis. And uh, when the opacity seen in a child with acute asthmatic exacerbation but without high fever, chest pain or leukocytosis, much more likely to be caused by the atelectasis than pneumonia. Like in this case, there is the perihilar peribronchial opacities, results of the viral bronchiolitis accompanied by the focal citrichy opacity in the right lower zone <coughs> by the lateral view showing the linear opacity in the right middle zone so indicating the atelectasis. So when there is atelectasis, we, uh, it means that uh, there is the viral infection. When there is the linear opacity, indicated that it's atelectasis. Multiple patchy lung opacities, it reflects filling of the alveolar space with the exudates, edema, or blood, caused by infection or aspiration, immune-mediated pneumonitis, pulmonary hemorrhage, or pulmonary edema. 
multiple bilateral alveolar opacity suggests bacterial infection most commonly staphylococcal. Like in this case, there is multiple patchy opacities bilaterally seen in both lungs. Another case of the multiple bilateral <coughs> opacities, this occur more basally located, and uh, the case uh, the child ingested kerosene, so it is a case of the aspirated pneumonia. <coughs> this another case, multi, uh, bilateral patchy opacities in the basally and by CT scan showing the some uh, low attenuated area inside indicating that fat containing within the consolidation. Uh, so it means the lipoid pneumonia developed in the child who was given oral mineral oil for the treatment of constipation. Peribronchial and interstitial patterns. The vast majority of upper respiratory tract infections in the childhood are viral in nature and primarily bronchial in location. Such infections may result in pulmonary opacities that differ significantly from those seen with the bacterial pneumonia. Peribronchial and interstitial patterns, we have pe parahylar peribronchial opacity, hazy reticular or reticulonodular opacity, and miliary nodules. Parahylar peribronchial opacities, either it is acute, which is uh, the cause is infection, viral mycoplasma chlamydia pertosis, or chronic, like in asthma, cystic fibrosis, immunologic <coughs> deficiency disease, and chronic aspiration. Bilateral, in this case, PA view, bilateral perihylar peribronchial opacity are typical of viral in the respiratory tract infection. More pronounced inflammatory edema produce dense perihylar region, leading to the shaggy heart appearance. Acute peribronchial opacities are most often caused by viral respiratory infections. Bilateral hilar adenopathy and scattered areas of the subsegmental atelectasis are common associated finding. Like in this case, is associated with the atelectasis. This is the, the fissures are displaced, so indicating the atelectasis of the middle lobe. Chlamydia trachomatis infection has a similar appearance and caused and uh, usually occurs just after a newborn period. This is the case of chlamydia pneumonia, prominent peribronchial opacities with a slight nodularity are seen in the lung basis. So the appearance is similar, but when it is occur in the newborn. When you see peribronchial, uh, how do you find shaggy heart appearance? This indicates some sort of atypical infection, like viral pneumonia, viral. mycoplasma pneumonia, things like that. Yes. While when you see airspace opacification but with airborne program and consolidation, no signs of volume loss, this indicates bacterial, usual bacterial pneumonia, yes. more. Immunologic deficiency disease and recurrent aspiration may result in the persisting pattern of the perihylar peribronchial opacity and may eventually lead to the bronchiectasis. Hazy reticular or reticulonodular opacity causes either infection, pulmonary edema, pulmonary lymphangiectasia, hemangiomatosis, <coughs> idiopathic pulmonary hemosiderosis, interstitial pneumonitis, Langerhans cell cystocytosis, tuberculous sclerosis, tuberous sclerosis, connective tissue disease, lymphocytic infiltrative disease, malignancy like leukemia, lymphoma, or lymphangiotic metastasis. Viral or respiratory tract infection, in this case, there is uh, fine interstitial pattern in the lungs uh, with the viral infection caused by the uh, causing the lungs to be appear diffusely hazy. In general, bacterial infections of the lung do not have this appearance except in the neonate, when bacterial pneumonia can present as diffuse haziness or reticular nodularity. High-resolution CT can be used successfully to better evaluate interstitial and airway abnormalities in pediatric patients under certain conditions. Low-dose technique with a limited coverage are advised. Miliary nodules consists of tiny nodules smaller than 5 mm that are randomly distributed throughout the lungs. The tiny, nod tiny nodules can be difficult to see on radiographs in some cases, and CT can better define the nodules and other associated abnormalities such as lymphadenopathy. Causes either infection by tuberculosis, cystoplasmosis, or viral, idiopathic pulmonary hemosideriosis, metastatic disease. 
So these are the differential derivatives of milli milli no joules. Three costs. We have these cases that there is multiple chain tiny nodules through the length. And in this case, bilaterally, they are caused secondary to the tuberculosis. So it's miliary tuberculosis. Another subject is about abnormal lung volume. Pulmonary aeration abnormalities are best evaluated on the chest radiograph by observing the following criteria. First, the relative size of the lung or hemithoracus. Second, the degree of radiolucency of the lung. Third, the pulmonary vascularity or blood flow to the lung. Bilateral smallness of the lungs is, is commonly caused by less than complete inspiration. The technical difficulties of obtaining good inspiration chest film in children are significant. Causes of abnormal lung volume, either pulmonary hypoplasia or agenesis, bilateral typus, not uh, causes of abnormal lung volume, or bilateral lung hyperinflation, asymmetric or unilateral aeration. First, we have pulmonary hypoplasia or agenesis. We have either congenital or acquired, congenital pulmonary hypoplasia or severe Jemis syndrome. Congenital pulmonary hypoplasia is associated with the hypoplasia or absence of the ipsilateral pulmonary artery. Sometimes associated with the congenital heart disease, most often tetralogy of fallot or persistent truncus arteriosus. Hypogenetic lung is one of the features of congenital pulmonary venulobar scimitar syndrome. Scimitar. Yes, scimitar syndrome. In tetralogy of fallot, left lung is affected. In semitar syndrome, right lung is affected. In pulmonary agenesis, which is a rare anomaly that results from the insult during the fourth week of fetal life, the right and the left lung are affected with equal frequency. Right pulmonary agenesis has an increased association with other congenital malformations involving the heart, skeleton, GI tract, and genitourinary tract. In chest radiograph or CT scan, there are severe volume loss and opacity on the side of a genesis, close spacing of the ribs, the bronchus and pulmonary artery to the affected lung are absent, and blood flow to the contralateral lung is increased. These are the features of the hypoplasia. Like in this case, there is complete loss of the aeration of the right lung and the mediastinal shift to the right, the vascularity of the contralateral uh, side is increased. By MRI, so, uh, CT, sorry, coronal CT reconstruction, the same patient reveals complete absence of the right lung and the right main bronchus is absent. Pulmonary hypoplasia in the new neonate can be unilateral or bilateral. Bilateral pulmonary hypoplasia is most often the result of compression of the lung during fetal development and causes are either intrathoracic or extrathoracic. Most common cause is congenital diaphragmatic hernia. Although the hernia itself is most often unilateral, the increased volume of the thorax on the side of the hernia causes compression of the contralateral lung, resulting in the bilateral asymmetric lung hypoplasia. Like in this case, there is multiple air fluid air filled uh, bowel loop is inside the left uh, hemidiaphragm, uh, compressing the right side, uh, left uh, <coughs> lung, and um, uh, shifting mediastinum to the right side, causing the hypoplastic left lung. Well, it's difficult to decide. There is hernia on the left. Which one is the left, which one is the right? Really, and if you, they will not have high palpitation of the right one, to mm -hmm. it will be hypoplastic right one. So, yeah. <coughs> so, this seat, I think, will not be too good for us. Anyway, good. Other intrathoracic causes are bilateral chalithoracus, large intrathoracic cysts or tumors, and neuroblastoma, teratoma, cystic adenomatoid malformation, or market cardiomegaly. Extrathoracic compression of the fetal lung is most often caused by the oligohydraminus. And uh, additional causes, uh, neuromuscular abnormalities, uh, large abdominal masses, enlarged kidneys, or ascites. Severe Jemis syndrome is an acquired hypoplastic lung that develops following severe obliterative bronchiolitis, leading to the bronchiolar obstruction, bronchiectasis, and distal air, uh, airspace destruction. Bronchiectasis is not present in all cases. 
air enters the lung by air drift phenomenon but becomes trapped because of the bronchular obstruction. Air trapping results in the lung that change very little in size between inspiration and expiration. This important feature helps us to distinguish the hypoplastic sewer germs lung from the congenitally hypoplastic lung. CT is more sensitive than radiographs in detecting earth areas of the air trapping and helps us to exclude other causes of central bronchial obstruction. In this case, there is a small, relatively hyperlucent left lung. The left pulmonary vascularity decreases. So when you see increased lucency but decreased volume, well, increased lucency means like emphysema or something like that, should be increased volume. Yes. Except in this condition, Swire James syndrome, there is decreased volume and increased lucency. If you don't know about the diagnosis by PA, it's expired at all. Or PA is normal. You cannot even see it. See a James and a plastic. Because the small lung, both are small. Yeah, sure. <coughs> small pulmonary artery. The, the clinical will help you here. The history of viral infection. Uh, all the age group and you can do uh, expiratory form to confirm. Little change. Little change occur. There is no air trapping. Yes. Hypoplastic should be no air trapping because it's small. Please. Yes. But in spatial span, uh, little change. Little yes. change. So our gems should be decreased little. Yes, exactly. Bilateral, bilateral lung hyper inflation causes either diffuse peripheral obstruction or central obstruction. Diffuse uh, peripheral obstruction, viral bronchi bronchitis, bronchiolitis, asthma, cystic fibrosis, immunologic deficiency disease, chronic aspiration, graft versus host disease. Central obstruction either extrinsic or intrinsic, extrinsic vascular anomaly, mediastinal masses, intrinsic tracheal form body, tracheal neoplasm, granuloma. Small airway obstruction, widespread obstruction of the peripheral airway is a common cause of obstructive emphysema and is most often the result of viral bronchitis and bronchiolitis or asthma. Infants with a cystic fibrosis can present with an appearance identical to that, uh, to that of the bronchi bronchiolitis. Cystic fibrosis should be considered in any infant who present with a multiple episode of bronchiolitis. This is a case of cystic fibrosis. There is a bilateral peribronchial opacities, hyperinflation of the lungs. This appearance resembles that seen with a viral or respiratory tract infection or bronchiolitis. And uh, this is another patient in later stage of the cystic fibrosis showing the thickening of the bronchi, small peribronchial opacity and uh, bronchiectatic changes like uh, it's seen more with the CT scan. This axial section showing the circular and fusiform bronchiectatic changes. Central airway obstruction leading to the bilateral over aeration of the lungs is less common than the peripheral obstruction. A right-sided aortic arch is the key radiographic clue to the presence of obstructive vascular ring. Most cases of the double aortic arch, 70% consists of a large posterior right-sided arch and small anterior left-sided arch that encircles the esophagus and the trachea. <coughs> the diagnosis may be verified by barium esophagus, esophago, uh, esophagram, which uh, shows a reverse S configuration caused by the bilateral vascular impression on the esophagus. <coughs> this is a barium solo showing the bilateral, the, the double aortic arch encircling the, uh, compressing. compressing the uh, so esophagus. Uh, showing um, the reverse is sign configuration. And uh, CT or MRI are more uh, showing the both uh, double aortic arch more uh, better. Uh, this is the large, large right, uh, right and small left. Asymmetric or unilateral aeration abnormalities. Pulmonary aeration abnormalities are frequently asymmetric or unilateral. A large hyperlucent semithorax must often indicate this overinflation of an entire lobe or lung. Such hyperaeration may represent obstructive emphysema or compensatory overinflation resulting from the decreased volume of the contralateral lung. Pulmonary vascularity is the key to differentiation. This is uh, the uh, we have uh, on inspiration, the right lung is slightly larger 
than the left and uh, more radio lucent. <coughs> this is during inspiration. By expiration, the left lung is changing volume more. The right lung is the same. So the right one is the abnormal lung. And uh, it is uh, caused by the foreign body inside the bronchus. But keep in mind, this will be very difficult to ask a child yes. for an expiratory form. Uh, adults can do it sometimes, yes. most of the time. So you need to be to have clinical history. What's wrong? Uh, swelling of foreign body, recurrent chest infection. Since how long? Age of the child. Then you won't expect foreign body in a ten-year-old child. You expect it in three, four, five years. Okay. So clinically, it's very important. We have congenital lobar hyperinflation or emphysema. Consists of obstructive emphysema of single lobe of the lung, most commonly the left upper right middle or right upper lobe. Usually, emphysema is the result of underdevelopment of the segmental bronchial cartilage, which leads to the expiratory airway collapse and ball valve type of obstruction. Early in the newborn period, the obstructed lobe may be opaque because of the delayed clearance of the fluid distal to the obstruction. Gradually, the fluid clears and the involved lobe is filled with the air and overinflated. Like in this case, at first it is uh, opaque, but after that, after the clearance, the air filled and become translucent. Emphysematis, yeah. We have acquired lobar emphysema. Can occur as a result of bronchial damage associated with the inflammatory conditions or uh, bronchopulmonary dysplasia. Like in this case, radiograph in infant who was born prematurely shows diffuse, hazy, and reticular opacities in the lung and uh, severe overinflation of the right lung. Secondary to the bronchopulmonary dysplasia, CT uh, performed with the patient in a right decubitus position show persistent marked hyperinflation of the right lower lobe. So you can see the lobe is single lobe only, it's emphysematous, inflated, causing mass effect, compressing the rest of the lung, and impairing normal breathing. So they, they just remove this lobe and everything will go back to normal. Obstructive emphysema in older infant and children must often cause it by an endobronchial form body or mucus plug. Mucus plug occur most commonly in asthmatic and in children with a viral or respiratory tract infection. Other less common causes of unilateral obstructive emphysema include endobronchial mass such as tuberculous granulomas and extrinsic compressing lesions such as anomalous blood vessels and mediastinal tumor and cystis. Pneumothorax may cause a large hyperlucent hemothorax that mimic obstructive emphysema. In supine patients, the pleural air may lie entirely along the anterior surface of the lung and no free lung edge will be visible. Clues to the presence of an anterior pneumothorax include increased radiolucency, like in this case, of the hemothorax and increased sharpness of the mediastinal border. Pulmonary cavities. Cavities in the lung of children are most often inflammatory or post-inflammatory. We have many causes, lung abscess, nematocyl, congenital lung cysts, congenital pulmonary airway malformation, congenital diaphragmatic hernia. Lung abscess usually develop as a complication of bacterial pneumonia and can be solitary or multiple. The wall of the, an abscess is thick and irregular and some contain uh, air fluid level. Like in this case, in the PHS radiograph showing a solid like mass and in the city shows the thick wall thick wall containing fluid hypo intense uh, fluid which is in, indicate pus containing abscess Nematocyl are thin walled lung cavities uh, that commonly occur with a pulmonary infarction infection in children Staphylococcal pneumonia is a classically associated with the lung necrosis and a nematocyl formation but cavitation now is more uh, commonly seen with the streptococcus pneumonia and uh, can occur with the other infection, including tuberculosis. Multiple large nematocyl followed viral infection in the HIV positive uh, child. CT shows a numerous a small nematocyl within the resolving This is two patients. Pneumonia. Two patients, uh, yes, not this. Uh, this is large and this is small. small. This one is small. 
More often, the nematocyl remains relatively small and resolves spontaneously, occasionally nematocyl rupture leading to the nemothorax or pneumomediastinum. Other causes of nematocyl in children include blunt chest trauma, hydrocarbon pneumonitis, and Langerhans cell histocytosis. Congenital lung cysts are uncommon and may be indistinguishable from the nematocyl. Congenital cysts are usually thin-walled and more commonly occur in the lower lobes. Most are asymptomatic unless they become infected or undergo rapid expansion with the development of the tension pneumonia. Phenomenon, tension phenomenon. Congenital pulmonary airway malformation, cystic abdominomatoid malformation, is a heterogeneous group of lesions that result from the early maldevelopment of the airway. Although the lesions are commonly cystic, non cystic variants can occur. The radiographic appearance can vary from the predominantly solid lesion with the multiple tiny cysts to the multiple large thin walled cysts that mimic congenital lobar emphysema. This is the MRI, fetal MRI, showing the multiloculated lesion, indicating the uh, congenital pul pulmonary airway malformation. This is the coronal and uh, the axial uh, and the yes, sagittal. I don't see anything in from this. <laughs> Congenital diaphragmatic hernia, air filled locus of the bowel in the congenital diaphragmatic hernia can resemble the multiple cysti uh, cysts of the cystic adenomatoid malformation. An important clue to the correct diagnosis of diaphragmatic hernia is the absence or pos uh, paucity of the gas filled bowel locus within the abdomen. We have uh, either it is the hernia occur through the foramen of Bogdalag or through the foramen of Morgagni. Through the foramen of Bogdalag is uh, more common and lies posteriorly <coughs> and medially in both sides, right and left. The left is common, 80% are more frequently involved the bowel herniation, <coughs> while the visceral herniation more uh, occur with the, in the <coughs> right side. Through the foramen of Morgagni uh, lies anteriorly less common and usually are less severe. This is uh, multiple air uh, filled uh, bowel lupus inside the uh, left hemidiaphragm, uh, deviating the mediastinum to the right side. The side of the NG tube and the paucity of the abdomen, uh, there is no bowel lupus within the abdomen, indicating that the case is congenital diaphragmatic hernia. This is another case, uh, bowel lupus with a visceral uh, liver present inside the right hemithorax. And the IP then the lateral view showing the bowel lupus within the uh, in lies medially this and anteriorly morgagni. This oh, is yeah. lung disease in the neonate. The conditions leading to the respiratory distress in the newborn infant are numerous and can be divided into those that can be treated medially and those that require surgical intervention. Surfactant deficiency disease, hyaline membrane disease, the primary abnormality is a lack of surfactant normally produced by the type 2 alveolar cells. Most common cause of respiratory distress in the newborn, most common in the premature infant, and occasionally occur in full-term infant of diabetic mother. Clinically, this infant is present with a respiratory distress within the first few hours after birth. The classic radiography finding of surfactant deficiency disease consists of the lung that are small in volume and have finally granular pattern with the air bronchogram that extend into the lung periphery. So small lung with small a granular lung? pattern? Yeah. RPF, or surfactant deficiency. Like in this case, this is a Shortly after birth, the lungs are small and diffusely opaque with the air bronchogram that extend to the periphery. And uh, after treatment, the opacification will virtually disappear. Similar lung opacities can be seen with the neonatal pneumonia, pulmonary lymphangiectasia, neonatal retained fluid syndrome, and congenital heart abnormality associated with the severe pulmonary venous obstruction. However, unlike patients with the surfactant deficiency, the lung volume in this condition are usually normal or increased. 
Bronchopulmonary dysplasia, continued use of the positive pressure assistant ventilation and high oxygen concentration damage the lung parenchyma and results in the condition known as a bronchopulmonary dysplasia. It has two faces, a edematous face, leaking uh, lung, and the bubbly one. face. This is a leaky lung syndrome. Uh, boring uh, with a clear lungus. A few days later, the lungus uh, also expand, hazy or opaque. The opacity represents capillary leak pulmonary edema. The radiographic finding of the advanced bronchopulmonary dysplasia consists of an over uh, aerated lung with a variable area of air trapping and atelectasis. Like in this case, the typical <coughs> finding bronchopulmonary dysplasia include irregular area of overinflation, linear opacities. Inflated, emphysematous, like the right lower. Yeah. And areas collapsed, atelectatic, like the rest of the lungs. So you see both of them some inflated, some deflated. This is not the The bubble. Yes. Retained fetal lung fluid is the result of delayed clearance of the fluid normally <coughs> present in the fetal lung. This condition, also known as the lung disease, uh, weight lung disease, uh, transient tachypnea of newborn and transient respiratory distress of the newborn, causes a grunting and tachypnea in otherwise healthy term infant. The condition is particularly common in infants delivered by cesarean section, presumably caused by the lack of the squeezing of the chest it as it passes through the vaginal canal. The radiographic finding of retained fetal lung fluid are minimal, but commonly diffuse haziness or reticular change are seen within the lung. The symptoms and radiographic findings are transient and resolved within 24 to 48 hours. <coughs> this after reverse and after uh, a follow day, the symptoms are all. Meconium aspiration intrauterine fetal distress can lead to the passage of meconium, which can be aspirated into the tracheobronchial tree, leading to the obstruction of the small peripheral bronchi bronchioles, resulting in an evenly distributed area of subsegmental atelectasis with the alternating area of overdistension. This creates a coarse reticulonodular or nodular appearance of the lungus. Uh, a coarse reticulonodular pattern throughout both lungs is typical of the meconium aspiration. This is reticular nodular, or I can say that multiple small opacities. Uh, the, the description will differ between people, but you can say some sort of reticular patchy opacities. Again, you need history of uh, prolonged labor, for example, fetal stress. That might suggest, by ultrasound, you might, uh, features suggestive of meconium uh, aspiration, things like that, and lack of response to treatment, then you uh, go and say this can be meconium aspiration. Okay, so, uh, again, yes, so in all of these conditions, clinical history is number one, because the radiologic findings more or less are the same all over. So in the clinical is number one. Yes. That's why we are clinical radiologists, not photographers. Complication of meconium aspiration, uh, either pneumothorax, pneumomediastinum, the resultant hypoxia can lead to the persistent fetal circulation with the right to the left shunt, shunting across the foramen of valley, lung injury. Treatment consists of endotracheal uh, suctioning and the administration of humidified oxygen. Pulmonary lymphangiectasia is a rare condition, occur as an isolated abnormality or associated with the congenital heart disease or generalized lymphangiectasia. The dilated lymphatics, uh, lymphatic course uh, through the lung interstitium causing a diffuse reticular or reticulonodular pattern on radiograph. The lung are often hyperinflated and pleural effusion may occur. Extracorporeal membranous oxygenation is a widely used therapy to support infants with a life-threatening respiratory disease. Extracorporeal means the uh, medical procedure performed outside the body. The technique is consists of bypass of the pulmonary blood flow through the semi-permeable uh, semi silicon membrane. The procedure interrupts the cycle of pulmonary hypertension and persistent fetal circulation right to the left shunting and diminish the da uh, damaging affected effect of the high oxygen concentration and barotrauma to the lung. It's called ECMO. 
ECMO is commonly used in patients with a congenital diaphragmatic hernia, meconium aspiration syndrome, neonatal sepsis, and pneumonia. Premature infants with a surfactant deficiency disease are often too small for the large caliber ECMO catheters. Therefore, use of ECMO is limited for this condition. On the extracorporeal uh, circuit, the lung invariably become opaque because the ventilator setting are reduced, allowing the lung to collapse. Often pleural effusion are present but may be obscured on the chest radiograph by the opacity of the lung. In such cases, the lung often fails to re-expand despite increasing ventilator pressure. So, usually you do ECMO for more or less full term baby, right? not premature, first. Because they are premature are so small, the catheters will not fit. ECMO is just a machine breathes for the child. Okay, giving the lung time to rest, to heal, and become more functional, okay? In order to do that, you need to remove the air or decrease the amount of air in the lungs, allowing it to collapse so that it can heal properly, okay? So when you do an X-ray for it, you'll see collapse one, which is normal, or not normal, expected, okay? The problem is that he, the child might have pleural effusion. The pleural effusion will not be seen because the lungs are open. So you need to be careful about that, okay? Shifting of the position of the ECMO catheter on radiograph should suggest an increased pleural fluid. Fluid collection. Ultrasound can be used to identify the pleural fluid and help distinguish blood from serous fluid. This is the catheter of ECMO. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Very nice, very good, very focused. Very, uh, all of them look the same. But however, we should <coughs> at least be able to provide a differential <coughs> diagnosis in cases of neonatal chest uh, abnormality. Again, clinical history is number one.